Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos on photosynthesis and cell respiration. This video provided an overview of the process of photosynthesis. The picture on this slide exhibits what will be discussed throughout this video and more videos to come. Some of the products and reactants of photosynthesis, where it takes place, as well as the numerous steps, phases, and photosystems involved in this process. Organisms can be classified into two main groups depending upon their food sources, autotrophs and heterotrophs. Autotrophs, which are also called producers, make or produce their own food. Heterotrophs, also called consumers, must eat or consume other organisms to obtain their food. There are two different organisms shown in the picture to the right, a fly and a Venus flytrap. The fly is an animal, and all animals eat other organisms as a food source, so they are heterotrophs. How about the Venus flytrap? Is it an autotroph or a heterotroph? And how could you scientifically test which one that it is? Photosynthesis can be defined, on this slide, as a complex biochemical pathway through which autotrophs use light energy to make their own food. A biochemical pathway is a series of reactions where the product of one reaction is consumed in the next reaction. In essence, it's a chemical chain reaction. The picture on the right shows how a biochemical pathway works. Note how the starting material changes in shape and color as the different enzymes do their thing. Visible light falls within a specific wavelength range on the electromagnetic spectrum, as exhibited in the picture to the right. Within the visible light spectrum, there are bundles of different amounts of energy. Three different things happen when light hits an object. First, light can be reflected or bounced off of an object. Reflected light is what you would actually see. Most plants are green because they reflect green light that your eyes can detect. Second, light can be transmitted or passed through an object. Finally, light can be absorbed by an object. We will talk about how light is absorbed in the process of photosynthesis in the slides to come. Photosynthesis is a synthesis reaction, an endergonic reaction. If you recall what we learned from earlier units on chemistry and biochemistry, that means that smaller molecules come together to form a larger one and that energy is needed for this to occur. The energy needed to drive photosynthesis comes from the light that is absorbed by different pigments found within plants. There are two common sets of pigments that are found in plants, chlorophylls and carotenoids. Chlorophyll, you're probably familiar with. Chlorophyll is a green pigment that is responsible for the green color of most plants. The reason that chlorophyll, and therefore plants, are green is exhibited in the picture to the right. This graphic on the right shows the absorption of different pigments across the visible light spectrum. Chlorophylls A and B are shown in green and blue. Chlorophylls A and B, as shown in this picture, absorb a lot of red light, as indicated by the arrow. As the red arrow shows now, they also absorb a lot of purple and blue light, shown on the left-hand side of this graphic. Very little of the green spectrum of light is absorbed by chlorophylls because most of it is reflected. Since what our eyes see is what re is reflected off of an object, the pigment chlorophyll appears green in color. Carotenoids, shown with a yellow line, absorb lots of purple, blue, and green light. The red arrow points at this region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Since carotenoids don't absorb much yellow or orange light, they reflect it. This is why some plants, such as carrots for example, appear orange or yellow in color. They have lots of carotenoids and fewer chlorophylls that would give them their distinct appearance. Humans contain pigments within their skin. One that's most responsible for skin color is called melanin. Humans, as you might guess, are not autotrophs. We have to eat other organisms to survive. Why do we have a pigment melanin in our skin then? Our pigment melanin, just like chlorophylls and carotenoids above, absorb light of different frequencies. Melanin absorbs a lot of ultraviolet light that would otherwise damage your skin, potentially leading to skin cancers such as melanomas. As the first slide suggested, photosynthesis is a very complex biochemical pathway made up of numerous important reactions and photosystems, as illustrated in this picture. There is a separate video that deals with all of these specifics and is entitled, Stages of Photosynthesis. The rest of this video will focus on the overall products and reactants, as well as generally how different organisms perform photosynthesis. One of the most important things about photosynthesis is that it is the process by which plants make their own food, which is sugar or glucose. There are, however, two important reactants and two important products of this process from start to finish. The reactants, or what is needed to fuel the process, is shown on the left. 
CO2 or carbon dioxide and H2O or water are both needed. As mentioned earlier, light is the driving force, the energy source that is used to make this chemical reaction happen. The products, or what comes out of the chemical reaction, are shown on the right. C6H12O6, or glucose, a sugar, and O2, or oxygen gas, are produced. If you balance the equation, you end up with six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water, coming together to form a glucose molecule and six molecules of oxygen gas. It is very important that you know what goes into and what comes out of this chemical process. If you have trouble keeping track of the products and reactants of this chemical reaction, try looking at things this way. First, sugar is food, and plants need to produce it since they're autotrophs. Second, plants produce oxygen that we breathe in, so it also must be a product of photosynthesis. Third, plants need water to survive, so it must be a reactant. And finally, the carbon that makes glucose can't just appear out of nowhere, so there must be some source of carbon on the reactant side of this equation, and carbon dioxide fits the bill. The last slide showed a balanced equation for what goes into and what comes out of photosynthesis. The picture on this slide might help provide a better visual for the process. Photosynthesis is carried out by autotrophs. There happen to be a lot of diverse organisms that are autotrophs, from redwood trees, which are plants, to green algae, as shown at the bottom of this picture, to photosynthetic bacteria. The processes by which these organisms do photosynthesis, however, can be very different. While we won't go into excruciating detail on how these processes differ, we'll look at different pictures of photosynthesis and how it occurs in these different organisms. On this slide, the process of photosynthesis in blue-green algae, which is not really an algae at all but a bacterium, is shown. Prokaryotes, as we discussed in the previous unit, do not contain membrane-bound organelles. Since chloroplasts are membrane-bound organelles, bacteria would not possess them. Photosynthesis in bacteria is a very simple process that takes place in the cytosol. In eukaryotes, organisms that have a nucleus, such as plants and algae, photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast exhibited in this picture. The process can occur very differently using different pigments or different biochemical pathways. There are three distinct ways that plants can do photosynthesis which will be described on the next three slides and these are called C3, C4, and CAM photosynthesis. Most plants that you encounter on earth are C3 plants. What happens in C3 plants is that carbon, hence the C, is added in three carbon chunks, hence the three. C3 plants grow incredibly well in cool, wet environments. Most trees, such as the elm shown on the left side of this picture, would be an example of C3 plants. C3 plants keep their stomata, which are pores that allow oxygen and carbon dioxide gas exchange within the plants, open during the day. C4 plants are named the way that they are because they add carbon in four carbon-sized pieces, hence the similar-looking name. One important difference between C3 and C4 plants is that C4 photosynthesis is quite a bit more efficient. The picture on this slide shows how much energy is expended during the different types of photosynthesis. The numbers at the bottom suggest that you end up with 60 kilojoules worth of sugar out of C4 photosynthesis compared to 46 kilojoules worth of sugar out of C3 photosynthesis, a difference of about 30%. Like C3 plants, most C4 plants keep their stomata open during the day, but C4 plants, like corn and grass for example, are best adapted for hot, bright environments. CAM plants, such as cacti and succulents, are actually a subclass of C4 plants, as they use four carbon molecules to produce sugars. One important difference between a typical C4 plant and a CAM plant is that CAM plants close their stomata during the day and open them at night to prevent water loss. This difference is very important as CAM plants, such as cacti and succulents that are mentioned above, are typically found in areas that are very, very dry, such as extreme deserts. That is the end of this video, providing an overview of photosynthesis. If you are interested in learning about any other information on photosynthesis or cell respiration, or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.